I wanted to, we wanted to start doing these uh, full moon and new moon uh, kind of summaries. If you don't already uh, get notifications for our blog, Making Mindfulness Fun, Isabel always sends out an email telling you when she publishes these blogs because every full moon and new moon, she publishes a blog that has a summary of it. But I thought in this video, we could kind of break down and go into a little bit more detail so that you can better understand how to make use or how to maximize your fullest potential of these next two weeks. So full moon and Sagittarius, big picture, what does that mean? So. When I write the vlogs, I think of one phrase to summarize each one. And so like for the example, the new moon that we had on the 30th of May, uh, I use the word chase the butterfly because that's what it's all about is learning to be social and just like follow your curiosity. For the full moon that's happening uh, in Sagittarius, I chose be a seeker because Sagittarius, uh, the archetype Sagittarius is all about looking to the horizon. It is um, symbolized by someone with a bow and arrow because it's all about looking with a vision down at the next adventure ahead. So not only does the Sagittarius rule big picture visions, but it's also about adventure and exploration and especially finding meaning as well. So during this full moon in Sagittarius, we're being, we're having a culmination in the things that give our lives meaning. So um, especially this is really um, something I've learned recently that this full moon in Sagittarius is special because we, the last two years or two, year or two, um, have had um, all the Sagittarius full moons and new moons have been eclipses. So this is like oh, a so fresh energy. So we couldn't energy. feel it, like it was right. happening, but it didn't right. really happen. And like there's more like destiny and karma coming out there, and so this is like a finale of the cycle that started uh, with the new moon eclipse that was on December fourth last year. So, oh my God, you guys, this is crazy because literally like sometimes I don't really sometimes I don't read her blogs I just know that I just go like I wake up and I just Ouch. know this I know things like that I have not read this one yet and this morning I woke up and just felt like all this clarity in kind of sometimes I with a big family like ours how we pull it off is because we'll go to, and sit down and be like okay what do you want okay what do you want okay what do you want and then I'll come and kind of create this big vision plan for our family and how we can achieve some element of what everyone wants and still create harmony. And literally this morning I woke up and just felt like, okay, it's time to reassess our goals. What's the vision I have for myself? I asked my husband what his was. I had sat down. I didn't really actually ask you because you kind of have clear, you had already told me a couple of days ago what direction you wanted to go. And Gabby and I sat down and did like a two hour business meeting, planning all this out. And then come to know that it's in the stars, that I was gonna feel like that. And on top of it, I'm not, don't hold me to this, but like I kind of like woke up today feeling like we might not be traveling so much anymore. We might, I don't wanna say get rooted here. We're in Lander, Wyoming, but it's like everybody's so happy and they have their thing. And like it literally would be right. a manifestation of Sagittarius. Right. And so if that I was, was the case. For sure. And like Sagittarius in general rules adventure. So a lot of, um, it was interesting for me at first because I was reading about my horoscope and like analyzing what mine would be and it's all about like oh you might want to adventure more at this time and explore more and I was like well not really in the traditional sense of I don't feel like I need to go beyond and find something new I just want to explore my present reality to the fullest and connecting it to um, the Sagittarius new moon we had last year on December 4th I remember we were sitting in Pensacola Florida uh, and I was just feeling like, I don't know where I want to be in life. I'm not happy traveling anymore. I just want a sense of community. I want to be able to be myself around people. And I have all these programs coming up. And I went through my camera roll and like the things that I was trying to manifest right th back then. And I've kind of actually manifested them quite a bit. And so there's this finale culmination feeling I can feel now of like where the dust is settling in a way. And it was very interesting to, cause I remember too, back in Pensacola, we were all as a family having a conversation about where we want to live it's and so how true. much we travel were, we want That was do. right before we went back to Polson and we were like torn about like, should we just stay in Florida? Should we go back? And, and like that chapter ended. What were some of the things you'd manifested since then? Because I don't think it's- it So, happen. well, I think so. The, the main focus for my manifestations recently has been more just general, general connections. Mm -hmm. So I had done, um, Joe Dispenza talks about how he exactly tells people to do it is you write the initial for the thing you want to manifest and you write it in like these wavy bubbles 
and you write specifically what these things fulfill and how they make you feel. So one of them like was the example, the word friends and these people that I described are they're adventurous. They have their own sense of self worth. They seem to be, uh, they t seem to value what it is I have to say and stuff like that. And I'm like reflected on it. And I was like, well, I actually have kind of manifested that. So there's an appreciation that has to go for that. I think, but was playing live. Playing live wasn't necessarily a focus then, but it has been something that I've wanted, wanted to manifest, to. so. Okay, so um, I don't wanna go into like every, I actually don't wanna go into what each one is for the new moon, because you can read that. You can go on Making Mindfulness Fun and, and right on the homepage or under blogs, it's gonna say uh, full moon in Sagittarius. But here's what I wanted to go over today, is that it doesn't always line up like, I'm born in the cancer, but I'm not always what lines up for cancer. Sometimes it's right. for Leo. And I want you to try to explain like how, how we should read it, how we should interpret your blog and know which house. And then maybe if we don't get this video too long, talk a little bit about what each house means. Yeah. So when you read a horoscope for the moon cycles, um, so if you go on the blog, I published a blog on the full moon Sagittarius and it covers the general of what Sagittarius, the full moon means but it also gives you a horoscope for each uh, sign. And you can read your sun sign. If you're new to astrology, you're probably gonna be like, well, I should read the Virgo one, cause I'm a Virgo. But you should actually read mostly your rising sign and then as well your moon sign. So the reason behind this is um, we consider in astrology, these are called your big three, your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. Based on your birth, the sign that the moon was in, the sun was in, and the time of your birth dictates how you, what sign you appear like, that's your rising. So when you read a horoscope for the new moon or the full moon, you want to look more at your rising sign because the moon cycles are faster paced and your rising sign will give you a more accurate uh, prediction. And this is because how I like to break it down is your sun sign horoscope for uh, the new moon and the full moon is going to give you kind of a big picture look at what things are like. So chances are, if you look back a couple months from now, and you look back at this full moon in Sagittarius, you're gonna describe it, what happened overall, it's gonna sound more like your sun sign horoscope because the sun sign is more long-term. You'll be like, overall, this changed my life like this. But in the present moment right now, your rising sign horoscope is gonna seem more accurate because it's more short-term. It's gonna seem like what appears to be most prominent in your life right now. And then your moon sign is how I like to say it affects your close life because the moon is the home. So what is personally happening with you or what you're feeling. So to break down this example, I'm a Sagittarius rising um, and an airy sun and a cancer moon. So overall, uh, if I just read my sun sign, it says that because it's Aries, uh, it's happening in my ninth house. So you're gonna learn something, a cycle of learnings coming to an end. You might meet a teacher right now, something that gives your life meaning could come up right now. You might wanna travel a lot. So looking back a couple months from now, I'm gonna probably be like, well, I actually at that time learned a really big lesson, but right now it's not so important to me right now because it's too it big picture. Feel relative. You right. have that relativity. It's not so no. relative. But for my rising sign horoscope, this is happening in my first house. So I might be experiencing more changes in how I show up every day, reaching a culmination in that and feeling like, wow, I'm really getting to embody who I want to be, which I could say is more accurate. And then my moon sign in Cancer would be my sixth house. So I could be feeling like I'm doing a lots of change in how I serve others and how I take care of my health, which is very true because with recently I've had uh, a lot of like many little health issues that have been bothering me and like my allergies have been going crazy and it's not like allergies are in the stars, but I've been focusing on my health a lot and that's something that I've been feeling like I need to take care of all of a sudden. So that is how my moon sign plays into it. I think they're really, if you're just going to go from a starting point, just looking at because your rising sign means your ascending sign, which is the first house. It's where the, it starts for you. It's where all the houses kind of anchor in, in that first rising, um, rising sign. So looking at that, and then if you have your chart, uh, make sure you've downloaded Isabel's birth chart. She has a free birth chart and tells you how to download your natal chart. It's really helpful. You probably heard Gabby and I talk about it in lots of videos, how important having that chart is. When you look at your chart, the outer ring has all the 
the signs, the constellations, mm -hmm. right? But right inside of that, when you look at the smaller circle, it'll show your houses. And the simplest way when I read her blogs, because I had to like really, I had to really systemize this for myself. It doesn't come naturally for me to think in astrology terms. I know for her, for Isabel, she just naturally sees it and memorizes it. It's, it's amazing. But I have to like add some level of logic and connect dots and look at it in ways to like you're memorizing something for school. I remember I always have to go and look at it and then um, you find where it's happening. Like so Sagittarius is happening in a certain degree right right so how like it works because if you don't know then what the houses are and how it works you have these dials and the dials have degrees on them so there's 12 signs in a circle and if you take 360 and divide it by 12 because i do know math you have 30 degrees in each right. sign so you have 30 degrees within each sign and so for example this full moon is happening i believe in 23 degrees of sagittarius so you go find sagittarius and you'd count to the 23rd degree. There'll be little um, like spokes in the sign where you can look at that. And then you look at what house it's in. And so you, if you're looking at your chart, you'll find, you find the sign Sagittarius. You count like 5, 10, 15, 20, and then the little marks, 1, 2, 3. And then you draw a line in to where the houses are and see where, it, and the houses are usually represented by numer uh, Roman numerals that's my trick that's how i use i go and take my natal chart and then take her amazing horoscopes and go oh it's happening in my seventh house or sixth house or fifth house yeah or and that's what i feel like is really important to understand but it can be complicated without a visual to understand um that's what makes astrology sometimes seem so biased or inaccurate because we'll read it for our rising sign like i could be like okay well my rising sign is sagittarius so it has to be in my first house but with how the, the houses aren't always lined up perfectly with each zodiac sign, they could be staggered. So half of Sagittarius could be my first house and then the other half of Sagittarius could be in my 12th house. So like, for example, even though the new moon was in Sagittarius on December 4th last year, it wasn't in my first house. It was actually in my 12th house. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind when you read your horoscope, you go, well, naturally they're assuming that it starts at the beginning of each sign like Sagittarius is going to be first at the beginning but you might have to read your chart to see to make sure if that because is because it's correct. like two clocks two clocks moving so you have to line it up so let's just talk really quick though about because the houses um first can you just give us a kind of an overview and the reason I want to do this is because we try to make mindfulness fun not too serious but at the same time we want to make it applicable because when it's applicable then it becomes more fun right learning algebra is not any fun but all of a sudden when you're doing it for something um that is in maybe you're designing a remodel of an rv and all of a sudden you need to figure out the area <laughs> for the flooring when it's applicable it's way more fun so the big thing with we talk about key codes sometimes and it's like there's these different there's nine key codes that we talk about more often but it's being able to see your life in multiple dimensions meaning your life isn't just your career it's not just the money you make it's not just your appearance it's not just your relationships there's all these things and when you start to use astrology and look at each house and how each house can either help you or maybe there's something that's hindering you in your house i i noticed that that's how it helps me is when i look at it in such a bigger picture but then can use it to kind of overlap with different key codes so first house i'm going to make guesses because i'm starting to learn is identity right and so but is it how i see me or how other people see me so it's a little bit of both because each of the houses uh correlates to a zodiac sign so first house is represented by Aries, second house Taurus, third house Gemini, and so on. So the first house has to do mainly when we talk about it, it's how you appear to the world, but it's also where we form just a sense of general identity. So it could be how you see yourself and it's kind of what uh, I've heard people describe as what your life philosophy is. So as a Sagittarius rising, people see me as like, oh, she's curious, adventurous, open-minded. And to me myself, I'm like, well, I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to be that person as well. I want to be seen as a seeker. I see myself as more of my rising sometimes than my sun sign. Yeah. I see it in, um, and it's not always linear like this, but I see it in you for your Myers-Briggs is your prospecting 
nature. Right. And I see it for myself as my seven wing in my in my right. Enneagram. So it's not like everyone sees it the same way, but it is kind of like when I think of my ascending, because my ascending's Leo, I always think it's like my, my seven wing that just wants to go have fun and, and, yeah. and uh, be loud and extroverted, even though I'm not. <laughs> okay, second house. So second house is ruled by Taurus, um, and it represents our material wealth and finances for the most part. When you hear anything that's happening in your second house, they, there's something going to happen related to money. Um, for the most part in finances. So you could have, for example, if this full moon in Sagittarius is happening in your second house, you might be having new connections with foreigners bringing you new money or a culmination in the way you make money. Or you might be finding new ways to make money that give your life more meaning. This, vi this video, it's going to go viral. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's going to go like a foreigner is going to share it. It's going to go viral. And, okay. <laughs> Phew, then we're gonna have all this money for a remodel. Okay. <laughs> and Got the second it. house also. But you said it's self worth too. It's right? also self worth. So it has okay. to do with wealth in general because Taurus it has to do with tangible wealth, but it also has to do with how you feel worthy, grounding into your self worth. So if you don't experience, if you're having the full moon in your second house and you don't have some new financial income, it might just be that you're rebuilding your sense of worthiness and you're reaching culmination or a realization in how, what makes you feel worthy. Uh, I could see we could go really deep in second house because uh, naturally I feel like there's this extrinsic intrinsic value system that's at play because it's right. material wealth so it seems like it's more external but there has to be but it has to be a yeah. little bit internal right and it's right. it's where we realize how they're so connected in a way like you can't have external wealth without having an internal mm -hmm. sense of wealth. third house Third house Number is third. everyday life and everyday communications Ooh, because it rules with Gemini. So okay. it has to do with the everyday people you talk to. If you have a full moon, hap if the full moon's happening in your third house, you're going to have something new happening in your everyday environment. You know, maybe your neighbor or the grocery store you go to. You're going to have some form of communication with these people that is going to be very valuable. Okay. Fourth house. Fourth house is family. Um, it correlates with cancer. So anytime something happens in your... Uh, fourth house, it has to do with your family life. And usually immediate family. Yes, immediate family, or it really goes to the roots of it. Not necessarily like your, it's the things that are your closest to your heart. So it's like, for us, it'd be our immediate family like this, but it could also do with our family roots or ancestors, deep family healing that you have to do as well. I think very root chakra. Okay, so fifth. Fifth house is ruled by Leo, so it's play. Whenever people talk about the fifth house, something happening in the fifth house, you can expect romance or a new beginning, a passion or creativity. It also rules children as well. So you could have something happening with kids, but the most stereotypical uh, description of it is usually has to do with the romance side because that's what everyone likes to point out, but it has to do with creativity as well. And this is interesting to know she's going to get to it with seventh house because it gets to be confusing, but fifth house is more like the romance part as opposed to seventh house is more about contracts and commitment, commitment, right. so marriage and that's why it's so helpful that, that way. And it, go ahead. And that's why it's so helpful to remember sometimes what a uh, zodiac sign it correlates with because the fifth house is trying to represent Leo. And if you think of Leo, you think of passion, fire, intensity, wanting attention <laughs> versus if you think about the seventh house, that's ruled by Libra. And Libra is an air sign. It's a diplomat, peacemaker, wants to keep things professional and orderly. That's dad's rising, right? Yes. It's very, it's very weird because yeah, that's, that's like the yin and yang of our marriage in a nutshell, really. <laughs> Libra, <laughs> Leo, oh wow. Yeah. Okay, sixth house. Sixth house is ruled by Virgo and it has to do with um, a few different things, but the main one that usually you focus on when you have sixth house is your health. So your mm. physical health. So if you're having something happen in your sixth house, usually it's asking you to focus on your uh, physical health, self care, your wellness, but it also rules your service. So it has to do with how we take care of ourselves and take care of others, what we do in service of ourselves and in service of others. Okay. It's, it's like really like, getting into the practical work. Okay. How would you describe, because third and sixth have some similarities, but is They can sound like they're similar. So, and this has to do with Gemini. So third house is ruled by Gemini and Virgo, sixth house is ruled by Virgo. 
Gemini and Virgo are ruled by Mercury. So they can seem like they have similarities because they're both ruled by the planet of communication. Mm -hmm. But these are different ends of communication that we're talking Seems about. Seems like third is more communication with others and six is communication with yourself. Yes, and like um, in one's much more lighthearted and curious where the other's more practical. So when you have something happening in your third house, you're supposed to focus more on being a social butterfly, kind of just communicating, lighthearted, talking to your neighbor, stopping at the coffee shop and having a conversation, being open to being curious and being amongst your environment. Okay. Whereas if you have something in your sixth house, you're much more self-focused and yet making sure you're taking care of yourself and taking care of um, your obligations. That's the big difference. Disciplined. Yes, mm -hmm. it's all about your obligations, the things you have to do, the things you need to okay. do. So we did seventh house, we kind of brush over, and that's contracts. So it could be also business contracts, yes, marriage contracts. any committed partnership. Eighth house. Eighth house is ruled by Scorpio or represented by Scorpio. And it's all about our deep desires and shadow work is the main way I like to think of it. And it confused me for a while too because people never really, I never really understood when you read just a horoscope. Sometimes people focus on just the desire part and some people just focus on the shadow part. But in general, Scorpio is all about um, our obsessions, the things we need, codependency, and so that's what eighth house is all about. So if you're having, say, this full moon in your eighth house, you're really uh, working on recognizing your desires and what is really going on in the deep shadows of yourself. So this could imply that you're doing shadow work and realizing, oh my gosh, I have, I've been acting from these desires that were actually brought upon me from family or friends or society when really what I want is this. It's also where we form intimacy. So um, a, like an intimate relationship, not like fifth house where it's all about play, but it's where we form a deep connection with someone else. It's definitely, it's the intuition sign, right? Yeah, yeah. Cause in a way, and not to be confused with 12th house. But... Yeah, 12th is subconscious, eighth is inner knowingness that we might not be aware of. Pretty much. Subconscious can be, I was thinking of like, it's almost, the good and the bad like 12th is the bad side of like us our, like our ego Maybe. driven a little bit more. well in a way it would almost be more the other way around because okay. one is unconscious both are unconscious and i can once we get to 12th house i can explain the difference more in depth but uh the eighth house can be like where we form good connection because we have to go deep into ourselves to form that connection but it can also be where we have skeletons in the closet Okay. And so it could be very ego driven and it can be the dark parts of ourselves where like, oh, you're acting from a manipulation control here because you desire control. Something like that could be from the eighth house. Okay. That makes sense. Ninth house. Ninth house is represented by Sagittarius. So it's all about travel, learning that shapes the identity. So the things that were, this is where philosophy comes into play and where meaning comes into play. Being more open-minded and curious to learn a lot, right? Right, and seeing past like the opposite of ninth house is third house, which is all about everyday communications out here in the real world, like talking to your friend or your neighbor, whereas the ninth house is the opposite where we go deeper, like, okay, well, like, what is the meaning of reality? Where is it like where we seek understanding and to find more than what's beyond the surface? So when something's happening in your ninth house, you can expect a lot of deep learning to happen or something that makes you feel more meaningful. And on the tangible level, when people talk about the ninth house a lot in modern astrology, because they don't really quite understand the depths, this is where travel comes into play a lot. So you can expect a travel bug or meeting people from out of, from new places where you're experiencing the unknown. Okay. Got it. Tenth. Tenth house is work in short. So you have to do, it has to do with um, Capricorn. So it has everything to do with your reputation, what you do for work, how you feel recognized in your work, um, etc. Okay. And 11th? 11th is Aquarius. So it's all about, it's two things and they can seem very unrelated, but knowing it's ruled by Aquarius can help. So mainly when we talk about 11th house, you might likely have something to do with your social life. So if you have a full moon happening in, such, in the full moon in Sagittarius in your 11th house, you can expect something to be happening with your friends right now. You're reaching a culmination point and you're finding more meaningful conversation with friends in your social life, but it's also more professional uh, in a way because of that. So you might not be like, oh, my close friend, but like this group I'm hanging out with and like more uh, moving communications. 
and it also because it's ruled by Aquarius could have to do with our big picture visions okay so it might be having to do with like a dream it's kind of related to the 10th house in that way so like here's my vision for the future this is going to give my life meaning that could be what your horoscope is more like for the full moon and then the last one. And then 12th, 12th house the is the subconscious house ruled by Pisces, represented by Pisces, has to do with unconscious work, healing, uh, self-limiting beliefs. It could do with uh, ancestral healing, anything that is beyond the surface in the subconscious, karmic healing, uh, intuition, reaching into the depths of the mind, okay. all of that. So one of the things that I think is a take home, because remember I said there's all these parts of you, but like even if you don't know what house it is, and even if you don't know where your rising sign is all that these are all just really foundational questions to always ask yourself am i happy in my identity am i happy with how much exploration i do both in the physical world and internally am i aware of the skeletons in my closet am i forming good contracts am i um practicing good communication am i practicing good daily habits of self-care we really can take any new moon and full moon is an opportunity to kind of check in with are my houses or are the elements that make me feel happy, fulfilled, emotionally liberated, um, are they are they where I want them to be or is there something that I can pursue more of? And quite honestly, like if it lines up with what house it's in for you, great. If not, just choose one to focus on today. Just choose what do I want to spend the next two weeks really uh, honing in on, questioning, uh, redefining, letting go of. And especially with this uh, specific lunation we're having uh, with a full moon in Sagittarius, we're really being asked to uh, reach a finishing point. And so we're going to be receiving a lot during this time. Instead of having to start new things, we're going to be receiving. Uh, and it's all with Sagittarius. It's all about seek more of what gives you meaning. If you feel like you want more meaning in life, you're going to receive. That's awesome. Well, if you like this video, make sure you like it. Um, hopefully you've already subscribed to our channel, but we'd love for you to stick around. Maybe it's because of the Sagittarius. I thought it was actually because of the Gemini new moon that I felt inspired to get back on YouTube uh, and really find, find really, my voice. It is because you're a Cancer happening in your sixth house. So in the long term, you're going to look back and be like, wow, I really changed how I served other people in the daily tasks I did. She's probably right. Uh, another real quick thing is Isabel has an amazing gift at reading natal charts. I highly recommend if you're curious about this to reach out, send Isabel an email. I believe it's bell at nomads with purpose or hello at making mindfulness fun, mm -hmm. either one of those and have her, have her read your chart. It's really, really insightful. Anytime I'm struggling, I go, so remind me again, like what am I supposed to do in this part? And she gets me back on track and gets me recording videos. So uh, leave us a comment if you like this. Leave us a comment about any specific astrology questions that you have so we can create more videos about it. Um, if you still don't understand the houses, if you want to know more about like why your Mercury is so important, um, if you're having trouble in your marriage or your relationships, why maybe we can do one about Venus and fifth house and seventh house. There's so many things. So thank you.